Cardano in Africa, really what that's all about is this concept of people being self-sovereign and being control of their own economic identity. You know, I'm not a big fan of regressive policies like capital controls or the government having unilateral authority over the information that goes to its people uh, or making arbitrary decisions about who gets to make money and who doesn't get to make money. These are leftover policies of totalitarianism and dictatorships and communism from the 20th century. And they are, of course, pervasive in Eastern Europe and places in Africa. Bad governments can destroy people's lives. The reason why we are so keen on cryptocurrencies in Africa is it's a foundational thing. Once you've given people identity, you can open up the prospect of reputation, trade, credit. You can then add in payment systems. You can then link that identity to property. And you could represent value and property in very fundamentally different ways than they had been represented before, which are fraud-free, which are immutable, which are time-stamped, and those records are global. So even if they're inconvenient to the regime that happens to be in power. So that's why we care so much about it. And it will take years to decades to see these systems roll out, but they are demanded. And what does that mean? Once they're out, it means I can send money to anyone in Africa for free or near free. It means that when they get that money, they will have the same level of protection and surety that I have when I put my money in a bank, but they don't have to worry about it being stolen from them. It means if they have to flee, they can take their money, their property with them. It means that their credentials are verifiable. It means that I can enter into contracts with them as if they're my next door neighbor, even though they're 10,000 miles away. And it means that when they want to raise capital for an education, to build a business, to buy some infrastructure, to better themselves, the life around them, they have access to credit. And it means that when they want to protect those things with an insurance policy, there's always one available at a reasonable price. We take these things for granted living in the developed world, but they are not a given for the bottom three billion in the world who are underbanked or unbanked. 